All right, so previously I designed this UI in Squareline Studio for an Arduino Nano RP2040 Connect and for this resistive touchscreen. But as some of you pointed out, uh, at this point where I left, where I left off here, the UI looked pretty, but there was no functionality. So you could click through it in the simulator within Squareline Studio, but when you pressed the touch screen physically, nothing happened. And in this part of the tutorial series, I will show you how to actually enable the touch screen so that you can make use of the UI that you designed in Squareline Studio. So to get started, mm, a couple of words about this touch screen that I use. Um, this TFT eSpy library that Squareline Studio uses does not directly support my touchscreen. On the official GitHub, you can find that uh, the TFT eSpy library only supports a single touchscreen, which is this XPT2046 touchscreen controller, and it's only supported for SPI based displays. So if you had a touch screen that, that's directly supported by TFT eSpy, you would need to enable it in the uh, user setup H file by adding uh, the appropriate options here. But as mine is not SPI based, it is just um, connected to the to two of the analog pins and two of the digital pins of the Arduino. Um, the native way wouldn't work, but how? So in my case, uh, this is the code that we exported last time. And you have to begin by installing the appropriate libraries for your for your um, touchscreen. In my case, that is the, the Adafruit touchscreen library, which I already installed, newest version. Once you've done that, you can import it here. And what I've done is I just defined the pins where connected at a display. As you can see, I just um, connected the display using these jumper wires here to the Arduino over there. And it's a little difficult to see because the lighting is pretty bad here. There we go. As you can see, I connected the, the Y plus, X plus, Y minus and X minus pins. And they just go over to the Arduino there. All right, so these are the pins. And then I just create a new object here, this touchscreen object. This is just how you use the library. And these steps here, they will work, they will um, vary depending on what display you use. But um, the important thing here is, if I just kind of look for this, let, let me just search this here real quick. You can see here, you don't need to worry about about initializing the touch driver, even though it just tells you it's it's a dummy driver. Um, this code is already present in the exported file generated by Squareline Studio. So as you can see, what it does is it defines this my touchpad read function for handling input events on the touch screen. So the program already tells LVGL that we have a pointing device, which is practically any device that either has a mouse or a touch screen or anything else that can receive X, Y coordinate inputs. So you don't need to do any of this. It's already here. Um, but then what you need to do is you need to go to this my touch pad read and modify it so it works for your particular display. Let me bring up the demo that comes with TFT eSpy here. There is a touch demo somewhere. There you go. And this is how it would look normally. You would just get this tft.get touch in here. But I replaced that because as I mentioned, my display is not supported by TFT eSpy. So I have to get the point where a user touched the display and I need to get it um, by using this Adafruit TS object that I created above. So I just check whether the user touched it. And this is a little hacky solution, but it does seem to work for my particular screen. So these values, they don't necessarily work for your display, but the Z, Z coordinate here generally is larger, the harder you press down on the screen. And I noticed that for my particular display, anything below 375 is just the resistance of the screen itself 
causing incorrect input detection, but you can use, uh, what's it called? TS dots, no, it's P dots, um, something. Yeah, very helpful. Um, Adafruit has a default threshold that didn't work all that well in my case. So I just defined these minimum maximum values. And this is just for calibrating the screen. Let me actually show you what happens if I remove this. Right, we need to do p dot x and p dot y, p dot x and p dot y. So without calibration, there are multiple problems on my particular display, but they are not necessarily problems. It's just how the screen works and the touch, the touch overlay works. So TFT eSpy expects this upper left corner here to be zero zero. So the origin of the coordinate system and this down here to be the screen width times the screen height so in this case it's 240 320 that should be here but if i go over here and apologies for just kind of filming the display but if i press down somewhere let me just kind of press say up here which should be zero zero Right, you will see that the values actually are not zero, zero. They are something completely different. So it's just 800 something by 800. So, you know, you need to transform these two vectors so that they actually are zero, zero. And to make matters worse, if I press the opposite corner there, you see that they are actually much less, right? So I also need to invert, invert this range. And in order to invert, the range and to make sure that the top left yeah the top left corner is the origin right i first of all i convert it to a float here then i subtract 200 and 135 because i noticed that the x and y coordinates are always shifted by at least this much so this is already too much so even if i if the lowest you know to the point where i should get zero even that would be like 200 yeah then i just kind of divide and normalize so that I get on this range to 240, 320. And then I invert the range here in these last uh, last two lines here. So that at this point, when I actually upload this version with the normalization applied, if I now press the top left corner, or at least I kind of try to do that as good as I can, it's a little overshooting, right? So it's negative two and eight. But that's, that's fine, you know, it's like fair enough. And down here we get almost, if I can kind of get it. The display is not the most accurate either, so that, that doesn't really matter. But we get around 220 and 320 ish, right? So it's close enough. At least the range is correct now, so you know, the directions are correct in the range too. And that's actually all you need to do. You don't need to do anything else. And all the other code here, the touched and the coordinate set, that's just some debouncing measures so that, you know, when I touch, when I keep my pen on here, it doesn't constantly detect it as like individual inputs, but like, you know, just one press. And that's pretty much all you need to do after you calibrated it and exported this UI from Square Line. And um, what this here does, it already automatically sets this data pointer which comes into this function. And that is already what passes the um, coordinates on to the actual UI. So uh, after calibration, you can just kind of click the buttons if I can hit them and it works. You see, you can change this. Again, the screen is not the most accurate, but it works. Everything, everything just is interactive just by exporting and by using the correct drivers for your touch and by calibrating the display. That's actually the most important thing because otherwise touching the screen here would kind of, you know, put past the wrong variables or more like the wrong, the wrong values to the interface. And then of course it doesn't work, right? And you don't need to use a pen. It's just a little easier to show because you know my, yeah, that's exactly why. Like I said, you know, the display is a little iffy, but you know, it does work with your finger. In theory, yeah. Right. Maybe you should use a better display, then you don't have any problems. 
This is pretty much the shortest part of this series. All you need to do again, just download the correct driver for your display, for your touchscreen. If, you, if you're not using this one actually, that's supported natively, which is this XPT2046. So if you use this one, you need to set the pins in the user setup. But if you don't, which I assume most of you will not use that particular touchscreen controller, then you need to download the appropriate libraries, set the pins, and then however you need to read the actual touchscreen that you have, do that. And you just set the variables here, more like the values to this data pointer here. Right. And again, most important thing, if your values are not correct, right, you need to calibrate it first. And as before, I hope you found this helpful. And if you have any comments or any tips or tricks for us, please feel free to share them with us. Uh, yeah, otherwise, good luck with your projects, have fun, and thanks for watching.